This is part two of two tutorials on how to create animated text and line effects in Shotcut using the Text Simple and Crop Rectangle filters. If you are a beginner and have not yet watched part one, you will probably want to do so. If you are an intermediate or advanced Shotcut user, you can jump right in. Before we go any further, Let's use the help about command to show that I am using shortcut version 21.06.29. But the techniques that I am using are very simple and should work just the same even with versions that are quite a bit older. I am starting with the project that we created in part one with a basic line and two lines of text on the screen. In case you haven't seen part one, here is a quick overview. The video mode is 1080p at 30 frames per second. And I am using four tracks to hold the four clips, one each for the background, the line, and two lines of text. To create the line, I used Open Other Color and opened a blank white screen clip. Then I used the Crop Rectangle filter, as you see here, to crop that into a line. Be sure to set the padding color to transparent. For the text, I used Open Other Text for each line of text. I adjusted the settings to get the font and size and look that I wanted. Note that I adjusted the text box so that its X position and width are the same as I used when I created the line. I also set the height of each text box just tall enough to hold the size of font that I am using. And finally, I set the Y position to put one line of text above the line and the other below it. Actually, the Y position is the only setting that really has to be right to get the text in the right place. But adjusting the other settings as shown makes it a lot easier to calculate the math for the animations. Speaking of animations, let's make this line and text move. Here is the first effect I want to achieve. I will explain how to create this effect in a bit more detail. Later, when we do other effects, we won't need much detail because they will just be variations on the theme. For this first effect, I want to start with making the line expand and then contract. To keep things uncluttered, I will turn off the text tracks for the moment and select the track with the line. So far, this only has a crop filter. And guess what? That filter is all we need as long as we know how to use keyframes. If you have not used keyframes before, you may want to pause this video and watch an excellent beginner's tutorial by Bentacular. I have included a link to his video in the description below. Let's think about what we are trying to achieve. Right now, these crop filter settings show the complete line, but that is not how the clip will begin. For the first half second of my effect, I want the line not to show at all. In other words, at the beginning of the clip, I want the size setting to be zero, not 1840. I want it to stay at zero for half a second. Then I want it to take one second to grow to its full size of 1840. I want it to stay that size for five seconds. And then I want it to take one more second to shrink back to zero. Let's implement what I just said using keyframes. I position the playhead at the beginning of the clip and click on the keyframe button next to the size and position settings for the crop filter. This puts in my first keyframe marker at the beginning of the clip. At this point, I want the size setting to be zero, so let's enter that. I want the size to stay zero for the first half a second. Since I set my project up using 30 frames per second, that means I need to move over by 15 frames. I click on this Add Keyframe button to add another keyframe here. If I need to adjust any of the settings, I can do that, but the size is still set at zero, which is where I want it to be at this point in the clip. Now the magic happens. Let's move over one second and put in another keyframe, but this time we change the size setting to 1840 to get the full size of the line. Move over five more seconds. Put in another keyframe. Make sure it's still set to a width of 1840. We want the line to stay full size for those five seconds. Now move over one more second, put in one more keyframe, and change the size setting back to zero. Let's play the clip to see what we have achieved so far. If we play it while we still have the crop filter selected, we will see exactly what is happening to the crop filter itself, but it is hard to see the line. 
I'm going to click on the background clip to get away from the crop filter, and now I can see the line itself. Beautiful. Just what I wanted. Now let's animate the text. First, I turn on the track with the lower line of text. Again, let's take a second to think about what we want to achieve. At the beginning of the effect, I don't want the text where it is now. I want it to start above the line. I want it to stay there for the first second and then move down to this position over the next half second. I want it to stay there for five seconds, then reverse moving back up above the line over the next half second. It looks like we can implement all of that just by changing the settings in the text simple filter using keyframes. I position the playhead at the beginning of the clip and press the keyframes button, change the Y position setting to move the text above the line, I move over one second, add another keyframe, make sure the text is still above the line, move over another half second, 15 frames, add a keyframe and change the Y position to put the text back below the line. Move over five seconds, add a keyframe, still at that same Y position, move over another half second, add a keyframe and set the Y position to move the text back above the line. Let's play this to see how it looks together with the line. Not bad, mostly what I want, but I'd like to add a little bounce to the text so that it looks like it overshoots its position and bounces back. Let's go back into the keyframes tab and see if we can achieve that. I still want the text to reach its final position at the one and a half second mark. But before that, I want it to go a little lower. Let me position the playhead four frames back and add a keyframe here. I'll put in a Y position that is 20 pixels further down. Now it will start above the line at the very beginning, stay there for one second, drop down 20 pixels too far over 11 frames, and then move back up into position over four frames. Let me go to the other end of the effect and do the same thing. I move forward four frames from the existing marker, add a new keyframe, set the position 20 pixels further down. Let's play this to see how it looks. Yes, I like the bounce. We're almost there. There's just one more thing. I don't want this text to show when it is above the line. I only want it to show as it comes down below the line. How can I achieve that? Very simple. Let's add a crop rectangle filter to this clip. We want the crop rectangle to reveal only what is below the line. Since we set this up using a 4x4 grid and we put the line right on a grid line, it is super quick to drag the corner of the crop filter and snap it into place so that only the screen below the line will show. Let's play this one more time. And yes, that is exactly what we want. Now that we know how to do this with the lower line of text, we can do the same thing for the upper line of text just going in the opposite direction. Let me do that quickly. Setting up the keyframes. Putting in the bounce. Putting in the keyframes for the end of the effect. Don't forget to add the crop filter. Let's play it and see. Yes, there we are. We are done with the first effect. The second effect that we want to achieve is a variation on the theme. So I will only take the time to explain when there is something that is less obvious. We will start once again with the basic setup that we had at the end of part one. This time, however, we want the text to be centered. So let's change that setting on the text simple filters. Let's start by animating the line. This time we want the line to expand from the center outward. That means that it needs to start with a width of zero and it needs to start at an X position of 960 to put it in the middle of the screen. Let's keep it zero width for the first half second, then let it grow to full size over the next second. 
Once again, we'll let it stay there for five seconds, then reverse the process. Let's see how this looks. Not bad, but I wonder if we could put a little bounce on the line, the way that we did the last time with the text. Let's go back into the keyframe tab and add a little overshoot a few frames before it gets to full size, and likewise a few frames after it begins to shrink back to the center. Let's see how that looks. And yes, I think that looks good. For our text, we want it to be revealed from the center outward. The easiest way to do that is with a crop rectangle filter, very similar to what we used for the line. For reasons that will be revealed a little later, I am going to drag the crop rectangle to expose just the lower half of the screen. Of course, initially it needs to hide the text with a width of zero and an X position in the middle of the screen at 960. I think I want it to stay that way for three quarters of a second, then grow to full width over the next three quarters of a second. We'll reverse the process at the end of the effect And there we go. Notice that we can use the same crop filter on the upper text and the lower text, so we can copy and paste to save time. The only trick is that Shotcut copies and pastes all filters, not just one. So both the crop filter and the text filter get copied. We wind up with an extra text filter when we paste it, but no problem, we can just delete that extra filter. Let's try out this effect. and I think that looks good. The third effect is only a tiny variation from the second effect, and in fact, it will be easiest if we start right from here and just tweak it a tiny bit. We want the line to do the exact same thing as in the second effect, but this time we want the text to be revealed vertically rather than horizontally. All we have to do is go into our keyframes and change the crop rectangle settings so that instead of starting out zero width centered on the screen, it starts out zero height centered on the line. Now you know why I set up the crop rectangle to cover just the lower half of the screen for the previous effect. This way, the rectangle is already centered around the line. Once again, we can copy and paste the revised crop filter and delete any extra filters that that produces. Let's try this effect out. And once again, I think that looks good. In many ways, the fourth effect is very easy to do, except that it can be a little fiddly to get the timing just right on the line. Once again, we will start with the basic setup and center the text. We also need to tweak the text box settings so that they span the full width of the screen. This will make things a little easier when we animate the text. Let's start with that. I want each line of the text to begin just off screen, but on opposite sides. I set the X position of the upper line of text to a negative number to move it off to the left. It may take a bit of fine tuning with the up or down arrows to get it just right. I do the same thing for the lower line of text, but this time I want to move it off to the right. It will be helpful to jot down the numbers that we wind up with so that we can use them again in just a moment. To animate the text, we need to add some keyframes. I want the text to start off screen for half a second, then I want it to move to the center over a span of one and a half seconds. I want the text to stay in the center for four seconds, and then I want it to move on off the other side of the screen over the next one and a half seconds. This is where it will be helpful to have the numbers we jotted down a moment ago. The upper line of text began off to the left at negative 1430. So it needs to move off to the right and wind up at positive 1430. 
Meanwhile, the lower line of text goes in the opposite direction. It started at the right at positive 1655, and it needs to end up off to the left at negative 1655. Now let's think about the line. I want the line to expand from the center outward as we did in the second and third effects, but this time without a bounce. Once again, that means starting with a width of 0 and an x position of 960. So far, so good. The tricky thing is the timing, because I want the line to sort of catch the edge of the text as it moves by. Let me show you what I mean. As I move forward frame by frame, look at the point where the lower line of text just crosses the middle of the screen. That is where I want my line to start expanding. Let's put in a keyframe marker there. How long should it take for the line to reach full size? I want the line to sort of keep pace with the lower line of text, so that when the lower line of text gets into position at the two second mark, the line should be just about as wide as that line of text. That is not yet the full width of the line, however, so we need to allow a bit more time for the line to finish expanding. Let's try giving it five more frames. Put a keyframe at two seconds and five frames and change the crop setting so that the line reaches its full width at this point. Now let's move frame by frame to see if that looks about right. And it does. Huh, was that a lucky guess? Or did I experiment off camera to figure it out? I'll let you decide. Now that we know the line needs to finish expanding about five extra frames after the text stops moving, we can assume that it needs to start shrinking about five frames before the text resumes its movement. Accordingly, I put a keyframe marker at five frames before the six second point. Once again, we want the line to finish shrinking to nothing just when the lower line of text crosses the center. We can put in the final keyframe marker there and change the settings to suit. Now let's try out the effect and see what we think. And I think that looks pretty good. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. I hope it has been helpful in giving you ideas on how you might include animated text and line effects using keyframes and the text simple and crop rectangle filters.